going to introduce myself my language first. Uh, hello, Bujo. John Wei Venise, Claire Shakaz, the Pado Dem, the Gichi Walnick Sagging and the Shabbat and Dojala. So, again, I'm Sammy Thunderbird Woman, and I'm from the Bear Clan. I'm from Rock Bay First Nation, which is uh, near Thunder Bay, but I'm based out of Thunder Bay. And uh, like mentioned, I'm an Anishinaabe, uh, uh, two spirit Anishinaabe storyteller. And I've crossed a lot of borders in my, in my own life, um, starting out as a nurse and a nurse practitioner. and. Um, you know, kind of moving out of practice, uh, you know, seeing people in primary health care and really focusing on um, spiritual spiritual care for myself and for patients and um, finding out ways that we can use art to do that in art making. So I'm just really blessed to be here and I just am so thankful and I just want to thank um, also my ancestors for being here today. So thank you all. And uh, I hope you can see my slides here. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about storytelling as medicine. And that's kind of going to go through a theme for the day, I think. As we share our stories and we share our voices, you know, we really do heal. We, we, we share ourselves and people get to share a bit of us. So I'm going to share a bit of myself today with you and um, I would be happy after on the break if you want to come up and chat. I love to hear everyone's stories and um, yeah, thank you so much again. So let's get started here. So you might know of um, Richard Wagonese. He is a he was a Anishinaabe um, storyteller, and um, he has a book called Embers. And this is a really beautiful quote from it. And it's nothing in the universe ever grew from the outside in. So I think this is really important for us. And a big part of the work that I've been doing is actually learning about myself, right? Um, and the more that I know about myself, the more that I can um, learn how to respond and react, right? And I think sometimes we live in um, a world where we're very distracted. And when we can sit in silence and listen to ourselves, we actually get to know who we are better. And when we know ourselves better, um, then we can interact with people in a good way. So um, I'm just inviting you today to kind of grow from the inside, right? Kind of look in. There might be some times you might feel a bit uncomfortable. You'll feel it in your body, you know? Um, we'll talk a bit about how our body holds trauma and things in a second, um, but how art making actually helps release that trauma. So. So, Anishinaabe storytelling, I mean, with any culture really, I mean, storytelling is how we, we share knowledge, we share experiences, we, we tell stories. Um, it's done through prayer, it's done through, um, you know, so many amazing things. And, you know, I do it through um, poetry, I do it through, um, you know, I, I write songs, I, I play guitar, I am a hand drum carrier as well. And thank you so much, Kim, for this, this morning's opening, it was so beautiful. And um, the teaching of the water really resonated with me. And um, I'm also going to share a teaching uh, of the whale today, so it kind of really relates well. And um, I also wanted to honor Mega Z, and, and this is a, um, a beautiful gift I received from a really close friend of mine. And it's actually a tail feather from Mega Z, so it's something important that an elder told me that I needed to have. Um, and maybe I'll tell you a bit about myself again, <laughs> sounding Thunderbird Woman. So, you know, our spirit names uh, in my culture are really, you know, who we are, right? It's our true selves, and, and Crystal Hardy is, is my English name. Um, and I just think about when I acknowledge my spirit name, when I say the language, when I speak so many things, my ancestors are so happy, you know? Like, they, they're with me and they're like, yeah. And so even when we kind of fumble or make mistakes, like, that's how we learn, right? And um, a good teaching that I also um, learned about the feather is, you know, we walk our path down, down the middle, right? And we have two choices. And, and this is something interesting Phil mentioned earlier, and I hope he'll share this story later. But for me, um, the two choices, it's not a right choice or a wrong choice. The first choice is to um, use your experiences and, and, you know, kind of demonstrate what you've learned, um, or you're gonna learn something new. <laughs> and it might be a hard learning experience, which you really learn from. Um, but it might not be, but just being curious about it and being open to it. So today you might, again, feel a bit uncomfortable. You might, you know, feel like you need something. So again, please reach out to anyone wearing uh, the black outfits and they will um, support you as you need. But just be curious about what you're feeling, whether it's anger, happiness, sadness, whatever it is, um, because we're meant to feel emotions. It's, it's really important for us to do that. And, there's a, I, and so I, I like to, um, when I do my artist ceremony, it's, it's more about the process than it is about the product. And um, I like to say process over product, progress over perfection, right? So it's like taking one step at a time. 
And uh, when I go through it, I like to record it so that I can look at it after and also reflect on the messages I'm getting from Spirit. So the whale I mentioned. So this is one that came to me, but we know the whale is a record keeper, right? A swimming library. And so we talked about, uh, Kim mentioned the water, right? And I think about we're swimming in the depths of the water and water is very much about our emotions. So when we're swimming through our emotions, it can get pretty deep. You dive pretty deep in there, right? And maybe you cry and that's, it's so healing. We're meant to, right? Um, but it also stores all those stories we have, right? So the same with our bodies. Our bodies, you might have heard, um, you know, the body keeps score or like, you know, that kind of thing. But um, when we've experienced trauma, which I have, I, I also have complex PTSD from a very difficult childhood. And, um, and so myself, um, art making and sharing my voice is really important to, in my own healing. So sometimes we get activated in our trauma, right? And so when we get activated, we might think of a trigger. So today you might get activated and you might be go, whoa, you'll see your body might be, you'll shrink in. Again, just be curious about that and that's okay. And then just kind of go like, what is this? And then maybe go, what, is, what would it feel like if I actually put my hands back or put my arms out? Just to shift your body around. So um, again, deep diving into our subconscious. Um, it is about being vulnerable though, right? Um, but very powerful. There's power in vulnerability. And that's something um, I've had a hard time doing over the years is, is being more vulnerable with my, myself and my story. Because um, I was told it's not safe, right? It's not safe to share, don't tell anybody anything. It's actually not safe to even speak. Um, so, um, so storytelling as medicine is something that is so important for me. So again, storytelling in so many different ways, it can be through anything. Um, but for me, um, I learned about this, well, not really learned about this, but I noticed like as patients shared their stories with me, it was very healing for them, being heard by somebody, sitting, sitting there with someone and sharing space and holding space for them just to be themselves and, and just to be vulnerable in a safe, a safer way. Um, so we call that narrative-based medicine, I guess, right? So um, a big part of what I'm trying to do though is, is combine like, um, Western and spiritual knowledge together, right? Like we talk about two eyes seeing is something people have probably heard of before. So like looking through one eye with the, um, the strengths of the indigenous ways of knowing and being and the other eye with the Western ways of knowing and being. Because we all have strengths, we all have things to bring. Um, and it's important that we do that together and in a good way. So so for me, it's, it's trying to speak two different languages. Sometimes I feel like I'm a translator. Like, you know, like, how, how would I make this um, more understandable for someone, right? And, and the same thing is in being a nurse practitioner, like we use medical jargon, right? So like, how do I make this understandable for people? And how do I make it understandable for myself? And I think that's where, that's the inner reflection we go into. So when words aren't enough, um, we know that we can dance. I mean, powers are so healing for us. It's not about dancing, it's about healing. It's about connecting with um, our spiritual, um, you know, uh, ancestors, everything. And uh, just when you hear the beat of the drum, right, it's the heartbeat of Mother Earth. When that drum hits, that's when we connect with spirit and it's just so beautiful. So again, we're, we're trying to like have this holistic piece where, you know, we can look at the spiritual piece of things and we've kind of been told to, forgot, to forget our spirit, you know, like, um, and so when we can go in and share our stories, we start to remember that. And uh, yeah, I can hope, I want to hear some stories today from you. So these, these are my parents here, um, my biological parents, uh, Ruby and, uh, and Rob. And um, they were really young and uh, they had their own traumas and things like that. And of course, I uh, experienced intergenerational trauma myself. Um, but it's, uh, I also remember like the strengths of my family, right? So like my mom was like super streetwise, super tough, like, you know, no one, no one would mess with her. Um, and my dad was just like super like loving a musician, like just so caring. And so I know that I have those within me as well. So I think that's important for us to remember because oftentimes we focus on traumas, but we have so many strengths. So my mom, Ruby, uh, that's us when, when I was small, obviously. So my mom is uh, one of the missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. She's presumed to be murdered by Robert Picton. I'm not sure if you're aware of him, but um, he's basically a really bad guy. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. 
Um, but this is um, something that's affected me my whole life, obviously, and I really wanted to raise awareness about that. And I've done that through art and storytelling as well and help my, with my own healing. So I'm going to show you, this is my daughter also up here. She's Blue Thunderbird Woman, and um, we worked on this piece together. So um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with jingle dresses, but it, it's, um, it's a dress that has uh, many jingles on it, and the sound really helps with healing and, and things. So um, in order to raise awareness about missing and murdered Indigenous women, I created a silent uh, jingle dress. And in place of the jingles, I put... Um, there is a database with the CBC um, going through like uh, the different um, missing indigenous peoples. And um, they have kind of like a, a pers an unnamed person and they just have kind of a generic face. And so I put that where the jingles would be to represent that there's silence now, right? And um, so this is what it looked like after. And also, um, you know, having conversations with people about that and they come up and go, well, what is this, right? And that's what art helps us do, is, is have conversations. Um, and also through quilt work, um, I've done that as well and created um, uh, a patch quilt with my siblings for my mom. And so, again, it's just, it's really healing and uh, really important. So, storytelling is medicine. Um, again, so my journey has been very interesting in my life. Um, I didn't think I would even graduate from high school, and uh, let alone now, I'm actually uh, a PhD candidate at Queen's University and in nursing, and I'm bringing um, arts uh, into nursing, and I'm really excited about that. I'm really grateful to be there, to think that my grandmother went to residential school and, um, and that I'm going to Queen's. Like, it's pretty, pretty overwhelming sometimes, and um, yeah, I'm, again, so grateful. So uh, my thesis is looking at storytelling as medicine, and it's an indigenous autoethnography. So um, basically, an autoethnography is um, a self-study, right? Again, knowing myself better and learning myself better. And um, what I hope to do with this is uh, really help people, you know, through expressive arts. We know, again, expressive arts is we can learn more about ourselves. It's used for many types of um, mental health conditions. Um, again. We don't want to get into the jargon. <laughs> so painting is ceremony. So this is really, um, I'm going to look at how we can do this. Um, explore the use of a ceremonial expressive art based on self-reflection practice. So this is hopefully going to help address compassion fatigue, which I think most of us probably are experiencing a bit of, right? We're like two years into a pandemic. Um, and I want to help promote greater em empathy for yourself and others. So again, this is what something kind of what it looks like when I do um, a bit of my painting is ceremony. And I'd like to also say that uh, I actually think everything is ceremony, every day, every moment, everything I walk. So um, when I do uh, painting, it'll be something I want to reflect on. So I'll put some tobacco down, same it down, um, and I'll ask, um, you know, my ancestors, I'll smudge, uh, smudge the canvas and myself and, and just ask for some guidance. And so sometimes it'll be like this when I'm reflecting on home, like what does home mean to me? And as I was going through the circles, I'm like, well, home is actually like in the stars, right? Like that's what it meant to me. Like that's where I'm actually from. And uh, using painting as ceremony, I've been able to connect with creator. And so again, this one is called 215 and we you know, all know what that's about. So I was finding um, a lot of grief over that. I'm sure we all are. Um, and it helps me heal through it. Um, yeah. So, um, releasing my pain through the paintbrush. I love that. I can't remember who, uh, which artist said that quote, but you can't, you can't say paint without pain. So really the goal, we want to promote self-compassion, right? So that we can better empathize with others. Because what happens is when we're overwhelmed with um, compassion fatigue, it's like, we just, we're so tired. Like we've just gone through so much stuff. We just don't have anything left for anyone else. And um, we want to make sure that, you know, we are going through what's happening right now. So right now we're, we're all grieving, you know, we're grieving the loss of a lot of things. We're grieving the loss, you know, of whatever we lost during COVID, right? Um, but trying to, to remember that grieving is a spiritual process. And it reminds us that you know, we are um, spiritual beings having a physical experience, right? We're here to, to learn and to grow. And um, when we release the pain that we have, we can crack things open. And I'm gonna share this story. It's so sweet. My, um, my nephew, um, his name is Evan and he's eight years old and he came to my house on Halloween, which we love Halloween. 
And um, I said, uh, oh, come on, buddy. Like, I got the glow sticks. And he's like, no, thanks. I'm like, what? Glow stick? You don't want a glow stick? He's like, eh, I get too sad when it runs out of light. And I was like, oh, my God. And so I thought to myself, what am I afraid to crack open? Right? I'm afraid to crack open my heart sometimes, right? Because it hurts. And then it feels really good, and then it hurts. <laughs> but that means I'm feeling something, right? And so, you know, I think about, um, we often avoid things that are uncomfortable, right? And, and so, what is the cost of avoiding those things? You know, what are we missing out on? We're missing out on the glow, right? So, think about that. What are you gonna crack open today? So trauma and resilience, Tons and tons of stuff we talk about, right? So a lot of the time we, we look at Indigenous trauma through obviously a non-Indigenous lens. So we pathologicalize people. And when people are having a normal trauma response, we think that they're difficult. We think that they're irrational. We think they're non-compliant. Um, when really they're just reacting normally to a traumatic event. They're activated in their traumas. So trauma-informed care is something that we need to do, and I think it's something, um, it's still new in healthcare, it's still something we're all looking at, um, but it's something in our day-to-day -day lives, you know, just assuming everyone's experienced trauma, whether or not they've disclosed anything, and trying not to harm anybody if you can. So resilience, we focus on strengths and away from victimization. So this is a big part too, where I think it's important to share um, our stories as Indigenous peoples and uh, our strengths because we have so many, right? And, um, you know, we're told kind of that, we see it all the time, like in the media and everything, all the stories we're told is that, you know, we're very marginalized and, and disparaged, but there's so many people who are doing really amazing things. So just remembering that. And, um, yeah, that's good. So this one I'm not going to go over, but I just wanted to share this. It's the polyvagal map, again, is science and spirituality together. But, you know, when we have a trauma response, and we all often do, we get activated, right? So this is kind of can give you a sense of where you are. So myself with complex PTSD, oftentimes I'm in the yellow a lot, um, and just because I'm, oh, I think I moved it over. I'm in the yellow a lot because of the traumas that I have. So if you're not aware, um, obviously um, post-traumatic stress disorder you've probably heard of. Um, but complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is when you've had multiple traumas over many, many years. And so this could be someone, again, that went to residential school and that kind of thing. For myself, I've experienced um, all kinds of abuse and um, punished for actually speaking my voice. So for me to be up here today, I think, is just, again, a, a huge um, testament to, to the amount of healing people can do and the resiliency that we have. Um, so again, when you feel yourself, again, today, somewhere in this, just kind of check in and go, what do I need? What does my body need? What does my spirit need? So again, I'm gonna um, form this study in the uh, Anishinaabe um, Seven Directions, and I'm going through also um, the grandfather teachings. So I'm gonna incorporate, um, so the grandfather teachings, if you're not, not sure, are love, respect, bravery, truth, honesty, humility, and wisdom, and then my sources of knowledge will be science, language, dance, music, art, myth, truth, and ancestral memory. So that is the big part for me, is when I connect with the canvas is where I'm getting my ancestral memory from as well. So this is a piece that I worked on, and I'll show you in this one here. Oh, it disappeared. It doesn't want to be shown. Okay. So when I do start this, um, which I haven't started yet, um, but for I will do over two, a two-month period, I will create art every single day starting on the first day of my moon cycle, which is my menstrual cycle, and I'll free write in my journal, which I like to do each morning, again, where I just kind of dump out everything that comes in and going like, what is this, you know? What, what's on here? Being curious about it. Um, and then again, offering tobacco. I'm gonna smudge all of my sacred items, my paintbrushes, everything, um, and go through different prompts. And so, again, I'll paint the process, and, and when I'm done, I'll kind of write down what I've been feeling, the sensations, what's been happening in the world at that time. Um, and then at the end, um, I'll have um, seven paintings, um, and they will be put on display for the community to come in and for us to share together. So some of the prompts that I'll be looking at, and this might be something you might want to do yourself, right? Like, how do we start our journey in this teaching? So if we're starting with love, like, you know, and actually, um, 
you know, like, how do we start that? Where do we start with love? You know, self-love? Oftentimes, if you've had trauma, you maybe don't love yourself, right? So that's gonna be hard. So thinking about where we can start with that. How do we grow within this teaching? How do we grow to connect with love? I don't know, think about it. How can we practice this teaching in our lives? How can we show love to ourselves and others? Like, that's a big thing. Do you walk down the street and never like to say hi to people? I say hi to everyone, they're just like, what, what, that's so long. <laughs> um, because we're connected. Everything I do affects you, everything you do affects me. It's, it, you know what I mean? So we have to do that. Um, and how does this teaching relate to Father Sky and Mother Earth? And how does it relate to going within? So again, that can be sometimes the harder part is going within. So I might say to you, how might you incorporate any kind of art making, you know, using your voice, storytelling as medicine in your own lives? And on the tables, we have all of these really cool um, poster things you can kind of make notes on, draw pictures on, and we can put them along the wall later. Um, but yeah, just, just reflect on that and feel how you feel. And, and maybe in your own professional practices, how might this work for you? Um, sometimes it could be just as easy as giving someone just a sheet of paper to doodle on while you're having a difficult conversation, you know, not expecting direct eye-to-eye -eye contact, right? Um, anyway, thank you so much. Chimi Gwich, it's been so wonderful. Um, please connect with me. Uh, my email address is up there. Um, I'm on social media as well at John Wayne and Way. And come and see me after. Thank you so much. Chimi Gwich.